Hi there, I am Nobu Kumalo. If it's your first time here, welcome. I hope you stay. And if you're coming back, welcome back. And thank you so much for your continued support. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please do me a favor and click the subscribe button that's down below. And also click the notification bell so that each time I upload a video, you will be notified. Have you ever felt like certain parts of you are not acceptable in the workplace? As if there is this different personality that you need to pick up on your way to work and live outside the door on your way back home after work? Have you ever felt like your Christianity isn't very welcome in the workplace? Or like you have to mask or dumb or dull down certain aspects that make you you that are linked to your spirituality and your religion because they are not exactly acceptable in the workplace. One of you guys here, one of my um, faithful subscribers sent me a message on Facebook Messenger and I'll put the message somewhere here. And she got me thinking about how my spirituality, my religion, my Christianity isn't something that I talk about a lot. On this channel that is a point of reflection for me that I'm going to think about a lot more but she raised an important question so she started off by saying you know she she feels inspired by me and the strides that I've made in my corporate career etc making it all the way to London and then she posed a question that have I ever found it difficult to navigate you know the corporate workspace as a seventh-day Adventist she alluded to the fact that in places like Zimbabwe for example if you are a seventh-day Adventist you may um, come across as someone who is uncompromising or unreliable because you're not around on certain days of the week and they feel that you don't quite fit the culture or you will not be able to meet the demands of the job. And she asked me how I've navigated that space. Some of you may not know, but I'm actually a Seventh-day Adventist. So before I go into how I've navigated that, I think it's important for me to explain or highlight what being a Seventh-day Adventist means. So... Seventh-day Adventists are part of the Christian faith. One of our main core beliefs is the fact that God created the world in six days and that on the seventh day he rested and secondly he put it aside and sanctified it so that we in it can also rest, right? How the Bible uh, counts the Sabbath is, you know, if you take it back to creation, um, Genesis, you know, you'll read that there was evening and there was morning, a first day, there was evening and morning and second day. So in like manner, Sabbath is calculated, accounted from sunset on Friday to sunset on Saturday. And links to that is, is our belief that Sabbath is the day, Saturday, right? Not Sunday, but Saturday. And so as Seventh-day Adventists, when we observe the Sabbath, what that means for us is that we disconnect from the world. We disconnect from all the things we would ordinarily do on a normal day-to-day -day basis so you, you're cleaning you're cooking you're washing you're going to work your school work you're studying for exams you're playing games you're watching series and we set apart that day the same way the lord set it apart and sanctified it as a holy day and we take that day as a day in which we unplug from the world to um recharge or to reconnect or to to further boost our connection with god and so we make the sabbath day about connecting and communion with God, but also connecting with our family and our friends and our loved ones. It's a day for me that is so liberating because for 24 hours, I get to switch off from the world. I get to switch off from, from all the things that demand my attention, from all the things that demand my productivity, all the things that want a piece of me each and every day. And I get to say, let's just pause that. None of that matters. For these 24 hours, I'm just focusing on, on my relationship with God, loving him as he loves me, praising him for his faithfulness. And I'm also focused on the people around me, my community, my friends, my family, pouring into them as they pour into me. And so in a typical Adventist uh, household, you know, that close to sunset on a Friday, you know, the mood just changes, you know, the mind starts to switch off and suddenly we're pumping our favorite gospel music you know and we've we're doing a sabbath prep because we don't cook on sabbath so it means that we're also cooking whatever we're going to eat on sabbath and we are preparing our clothes for church if we're ironing them we're ironing them and straightening them we're generally in preparation mode you right so we are preparing for the sabbath so that we can fully rest on sabbath day so now going back to her question as a sabbath keeping christian there are a lot of things that you will have to miss out on in life because 
of the Sabbath, right? I've even seen like, you know, in, in, in creative spaces, be it, um, you know, workshops or meetups or that because of the way the world is structured, generally um, Saturday is seen as like a, a normal working day. So a lot of stuff happens on the Sabbath, right? And so we kind of get you to the fact that we're not going to be around for a lot of things. So how have I navigated that and how have I managed to keep the Sabbath holy but still make it and, and rise up um, in my chosen career path? So I'll take it back to my early years. So this is my primary, my high school. Thankfully, I attended a Seventh-day Adventist school for my primary and high school. And so because they were Seventh-day Adventist, we followed you know, and we observed the Sabbath. So it was never a thing for me to have to worry about missing sports days or having extra lessons or extracurricular activities that fell on the Sabbath because the schools that I was in matched my faith. But come my move to the University of Pretoria in South Africa, suddenly these things become a reality. The fact that there, there's a lot of things that are going to conflict with my faith became a reality when I moved to the University of Pretoria, which is a secular university, it's not a religious university. And so I remember very vividly my first um, encounter and experience with the, with, with the Sabbath and the friction with school activities was well, during orientation week. On the Saturday, there was this like, I've forgotten what we used to call it, but it's like a, a very big, um, it's like a, a music and a dance sort of competition between the different uh, resident houses in the in the university and it happened on the sabbath and i had to explain to to the executive committee then that um i will not be available for rehearsals over friday uh, sunset and during the day on sabbath but i can and i will participate on saturday evening in the event right um that was pretty simple enough because i spoke to the head of the residence who was a lovely warm uh, woman so she was very receptive to that so that was easy but then now comes the complexity of exams on a sabbath it's at this point where the conversation is no longer just about oh you didn't pitch up for rehearsals um you can come later but it becomes something that could easily threaten my degree it becomes bigger than just me and a few girls in a race but becomes an institutional thing and this is where i appreciated the gift or the structure of what we call the stasm which is a student um association that you know of seventh-day adventists because one of their roles is to provide a letter that you can take to your faculty explaining who we are as seventh-day adventists what we believe in and why you cannot partake in that exam now, what would happen is that if you could not take the exam at that time, you would get another chance to write the exam, but you'd be writing this, it as a sick exam. So this is the exam that people who maybe got sick or had any challenges would write. But the challenge is that the sick exam was the same exam that people write as their supplementary exam, meaning that you would not get a second chance to write a supplementary exam. So it was one of those do or die because you're writing um, your main exam during the sub exam period. And because of, of that, some people felt like it was a bit of a gamble to, to wait to write that, you know, six sub exam in case they don't pass that exam and they won't have a chance to rewrite. And so some people uh, would make the decision to write the exams on Sabbath. But I, because I, I didn't know, I didn't grow up this way because all through my primary and high school, studying for exams or schools or assignments or anything like that it was just something that just never used to happen for me over Friday and Saturday. I, I really could not bring myself to suddenly start doing certain things that I would not normally do. But that also came with the responsibility on myself to make sure that I, I passed that exam. But luckily, even throughout my, my uni Sabbath aside, I'd never once wrote a supplementary exam. So I think I was a bit com you know, confident and comfortable with that. And then secondly, came these other events um, that would happen on Sabbath. So each faculty had a student executive committee and part of its roles was to, you know, plan activities and workshops and, um, you know, socials and all that type of stuff for the students in that faculty to sort of foster relationships between the students and the leaders uh, and the, you know, lecturers and professors and all that, but also just to open up students to more opportunities to, to, to engage in extracurricular activities that would be helpful in their CVs and their job applications. So, one 
thing that helped me a lot or, or one way in which I contributed or made sure that my life was a bit easier in one of the years was that I signed up to be a member of the law, the law faculty, execu- student executive committee. So what that did is that because I was a member of that executive committee and my opinion mattered as much as everyone else in the room, I was able to say, guys, we cannot plan A, B, C, D because I cannot do that on the Sabbath. I will not be around on the Sabbath. And I was in charge of the academics portfolio. I made sure that there's no career days, there's no career presentations or um, anything that has to do with academics that would happen on the Sabbath. And this brings a very important point, which is the importance of representation. So because seven day Adventists in the law faculty had someone like them in leadership positions, what that did is that I could, through my influence, help those who do not have the voice to speak for themselves to, to, to be able to freely uh, be who they are and, and freely observe their Sabbath without disturbances. We need more Seventh day Adventists, we need more Christians in general to fill up spaces, to take up space, to, to rise through the ranks, to be notable people, to be, uh, you know, trusted professionals. Because what that does is that because you are there in those spaces where um, the minority cannot be there, you become a voice for them, right? So they now have someone who can represent um, their needs, someone who can speak to them when they're not in the room. As much as possible, we should be fighting to take up leadership to take up those spaces and effect change from within so that's generally how i got through my university and then come the workplace i am in the legal field and i happen to to work for a very large international firm so london becomes the hub for multiple jurisdictions so a lot of what we have to deal with is dealing with different time zones and that sometimes means that work spills over to after hours because we're trying to align time zones and timings with many other different countries in different time zones around the world. Besides that time zones issue, generally it's a very high pressure field and because of that there's a lot more work than there are hours in the day. The general expectation is that you're going to work very long hours and work weekends. We have to give more of ourselves than what is written in Black Letter Law. So during my interviews, I did not upfront mention that I'm a Seventh-day Adventist because I did not feel that I, I, there was a need for me to mention it. Nothing in employment law says that you should disclose your religion, your sexual orientation, your all those other soft human rights type of things in an interview. Um, so I did not feel or see the need to disclose this at interview level. However, once I got inside, one of the very first conversations that I would have usually with the senior member or senior partner in my um, department was the topic around the Sabbath. So I would go to them and I'd explain to them that because of my religious beliefs and explain what those are, which I explained earlier on, I cannot and will not work on the Sabbath, which runs from sunset on Friday to sunset on Saturday. And these are the reasons. And this is how I'm going to make it easy for the team. I'm going to make sure that if I have, if I foresee that my work is going to spill over, I'm going to put in the extra effort during the week to, to make sure that by the time Friday comes, I've covered much ground so that when I pass on to whoever is going to be um, covering for me over the 24 hours, it doesn't feel like a burden. And I'll also make sure to remind the team every single Friday that, you know, remember I am logging off early today. So if you need anything from me, please let me know in time. And what that does, once you have the conversation beyond just stating the fact that this is what I can and cannot do, so I'm not going to be available. If you're showing initiative and you're showing that you are aware that not everyone um, understands your, your beliefs and you're aware of the fact that because you're stepping down, someone's going to have to step up and take, off your, take on your role. If you show that you are, you are conscious of that and show how you are willing to, to go the extra mile to make sure that you know, the, transi- the transition is seamless, Generally, I found that people are very receptive to it. I need to say, though, that I have generally found this easier because progressive countries, so the first world and semi-developed places like South Africa, that champion rights and, you know, um, freedom of freedom to be whoever you are, whether you identify as this or you believe in this, these countries generally um, really 
champion that and they they really take those things seriously and they take any discrimination very seriously or any infringement of rights very seriously it has been easy for me in that regard i'm not sure about in other professions but i, I do think as long as you are in you know these countries that are very pro rights that should be an easy thing to to an easy boundary to set but i am aware of the fact that back home in zimbabwe where i come from things aren't that black and white so whereas there may be if they are there some laws and regulations around um, freedom of um, f worship and religion and expression and all that they are not really strictly enforced in law meaning that's why you get um you know corporations or companies that can straight up tell you that this separate thing of yours is going to be a problem so we can't hire you because you you know you're going to disadvantage us because they know that there's no real consequence to it and so that's rather unfortunate and i, I do have like some friends of mine that you know in the past have lost out on, on great opportunities because they stated that they are you know they will not be able to contribute on the sabbath and that has become an issue and they've lost those opportunities i cannot sit here and tell you that you know no matter what they say you just stand up for what you believe in and tell them to you know um, that that you will not stand for this and walk out the door and yet i will not be there if you know you're failing to provide for your family you're failing to put food on your table but i am a strong believer that when you know god um requires certain things and second certain sacrifices from us he has the power to provide in place of those so i am a firm believer that when one door closes because you've chosen to stand up for your faith you've chosen to follow god's commandment you've chosen to to stand by your principles that god will not forsake you and that he will make sure that you and your people are taken care of it is i know it's, it's a lot more complicated than just believing for some people because you know practically okay i believe but practically right now i need a job so i'm, I'm very aware of it but that is personally my belief and, and my stance the the more we are consistent not just as adventists but as, as christians in our beliefs the the more the world will respect us so in in both cases in both of the law firms that i've worked at whenever i've tried to explain the sabbath i've had someone say oh i know the jews you know do that so and so is jewish and oh he also doesn't do apcd so maybe you should talk to him and find out how he or she handles work and so i've noticed that the jews because they are they are united in purpose and they are consistent and they will, are uncompromising the world knows who the jews are the world knows how the jews operate and the world does not expect any jews to you know uh let go of their principles or compromise themselves in any way they respect jews so much but with us christians we are very wishy-washy in our beliefs and our application and our practice of, of our beliefs so that's why you will have certain seven Adventists that will pitch up at work on sabbath and you're not pitching up and you will have those conversations where they're like can you help explain to us like which is which you both say are adventist but you are saying you don't do apcd but your fellow adventist does apcd so which adventism is this and it makes things very difficult if people are not consistent if we are not united not just as adventists but as christians in terms of our beliefs to show the world that this is what we stand for and we're uncompromising and and it's, it's another important thing also at a personal level i've had to say no one will respect my beliefs if i don't respect them myself no one will respect my boundaries if i don't enforce and respect my boundaries myself so if i am a bit like is a fear about this and on one one thing like i don't work on a sabbath but i'll be there for the party because people will realize that you don't take yourself seriously you say you have these principles but you clearly don't take them seriously and what that does is that the next time you're trying to practice and enforce those you have lost credibility because you're clearly a person who cannot be trusted because you you fail to respect your own word you fail to respect your own commitments you know to yourself so this is how i've navigated it it really is a a nitpicky and a, a difficult thing i think to practice for some people because economically things might not necessarily align but i do hope that you are finding the strength and the courage to stand up for yourself and stand up for your beliefs um against all external pressure and i do hope that you know especially back home in zimbabwe that maybe one day i don't know in which life, lifetime but one day we will have a constitution that actually protects these people and people will really be free to be themselves i hope this video was insightful uh, even if you're not adventist i hope like it helped you understand what adventists are all about and if you are adventist and you've been wondering how to navigate this i hope this was a somewhat 
you know some way helpful let's talk in the comment section um like and share and do the things that you always do and yeah thank you so much i'll see you guys again next time goodbye